designed to encourage, empower, and educate real estate professionals by sharing best practices from business leaders that are proven winners. I'm your host, Kyle Malnati, and this is Calibrate Real Estate. One. Broadcasting from the Mile High City, you are watching the Calibrate Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Malnati, and I'm so happy that you've tuned in to our podcast today. We've got a special guest. Most of the time, we speak with industry leaders and people that uh, have achieved heights in the real estate industry, but today, we've got uh, a young go-getter, a gentleman named Jack Sherman that's joined us. And Jack is someone that I've known uh, just briefly, but I've known his father for many years. And just to set this up, Jack and his dad had been having conversations over the last couple of weeks about what Jack can do for a summer internship and, and starting to gain valuable experience. Jack is in college and wants to work in the real estate industry. And so Jack and I had a phone call where he basically um, had just dec decided to talk to me about the real estate industry and see what uh, areas that he could fit into. And then a few weeks later, Jack called me, and this is just actually a couple of days ago, to ask me a critical question. And so we'll, we'll dive into that question. But without further ado, I'd love to introduce Jack Sherman. Jack, say hello to our audience. How's it going, everybody? Uh, Kyle, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. It's great to be here. You're welcome. And I'm excited for you. You're going to do great things in, uh, in your life. And so, Jack, uh, let's talk a little bit about your story. Uh, give a little bit of background. How old are you, Jack? And, and what year in college are you? So right now I'm 20 years old. I am a third year, so a junior at Colorado State University. Um, I'm in the College of Business, majoring in finance and real estate. All right. So you're a finance major. I love that. I got my degree from the University of Wyoming in finance. So we're we're sort of enemies at least once a year uh, during, during the football season when Wyoming plays CSU. Yep, the great border war. That's right, and Wyoming got uh, the best of CSU this year. So, <laughs> um, but, uh, but that's not why we're here. So, so Jack, let's talk about what you want to do in, uh, in your career. As a junior, um, you approached me and just said, hey, I know that you're an industry leader in commercial real estate. Just talk to me a little bit about what your goals are as a, as a junior, as you're approaching maybe the last 18 months of your college career, and then looking at your professional career. What are some things that you're looking at accomplishing, and, and uh, why did you decide originally to get in touch with me? Um, well, so as a junior, um, I'm starting to reach that crucial point of where I need to decide where I want to go after college career-wise. And I always knew that going into college, I did want to do something with business related. And I narrowed it down throughout the first and two years that I wanted to do either finance or real estate. And I kind of just planned on cruising through both of those um, majors until I come to a decision point like we are right now. And um, I guess my overall goal once I get out of college is to be able to go to work every day and do something that I truly enjoy so that. I'm not fighting myself to go to work. I love to go to work and then I can still make a nice healthy career that I would love. And so having to decide between finance and real estate, I figured I would at least start to look for jobs and getting an internship. That way an internship will obviously give me the type of experience and kind of the insight on the different industries that I need to make that crucial decision once I graduate. You know, it's really interesting. We're 15 years apart in age, uh, but we really have a lot of similarities. I got my degree in finance. We had just mentioned that. Um, I did an internship during my junior year, and it was one of the greatest experiences that I had in college. I was fortunate to have uh, kind of a, it actually fell into the internship in a way. I was going to go to Chicago with my girlfriend at the time, who's, who I'm now married to. We were dating in college, and we both said, wouldn't it be fun to move to Chicago kind of live the city life uh, for three months and, and get jobs. And it, it proved to be a pretty difficult situation from both a financial aspect because we realized all of a sudden the sticker shock of how, how much it costs to live in Chicago from just a housing standpoint. But then also we just realized, you know, we, we've got some credits that we needed to obtain. And so we decided to stay in Laramie. And I figured, well, instead of just working at the restaurant I was working at, I wanted to try to get some professional experience. And so I started cold calling all of the industry um, industries that were in Laramie, Wyoming, which is a town of about 30,000 people. There's not many, you know, it's not a big booming metropolis. And so I was just cold calling banks and investment advisors and other people 
just to say, hey, would, could you use any summer help? And a lot of the people said no. And I think a lot of it, they just didn't have the bandwidth to, to help someone out like myself. But there was one bank in particular that was willing to give me a shot. Um, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen immediately. I had to basically beg to work there. They said that they weren't going to be able to hire me. They didn't have the bandwidth to, to keep me on salary. And I said, look, I'll work for free. Um, I really just want the experience. The salary is not the important part. And so it was interesting. That was a call on a Friday. And I remember that the gentleman said, hey, call me back at the beginning of the week. And he said, okay, we will hire you. Uh, we'll pay you minimum wage. I didn't really care about the pay, but he's like, we're doing that because we want this to be treated seriously. We don't want you to just kind of pop in and pop out of, of the bank. We want you to be treated as an employee and we want you to take this seriously. And it was a, uh, it was a transformative experience. And so I think it's great that you're really digging into the opportunity of, of having an internship. Um, so it's really interesting also that you've got, you're getting um, an emphasis in real estate. Um, when I was going to school in Wyoming, Finance was was the major. Uh, that was a pretty uh, pretty obvious major. And then they had banking and financial services as a minor. I think it's really great that CSU has a real estate program. Uh, there was a time in my life that I, I didn't even realize that that existed. So talk to me just a little bit about the curriculum that you've gone through as a junior in your in your real estate studies as well as your finance studies. And I agree with you. Those are two fields that are really kind of interesting because finance is such a large industry if you really think about it. And real estate can go a couple of different ways. You can go residential, you can go commercial, you can go development. So just if you could tell our audience a little bit about what your, what your real estate studies have been like versus your finance studies. Yeah, so it's actually pretty interesting that CSU does that because a lot of schools don't offer that. And it is more of a recent development. I think it's their most recent major that they offer within the business school. But um, what really happens is they find, I found at least whenever I started majoring in both, there's a lot of overlap with which classes um, transfer over to which credits. And I think the reason there's a lot of overlap is because when people are looking at investments with finance and then investments with real estate, a lot of it is the same principles, such as like finding the present value of projects and stuff like that. So I think the main difference within those classes is just right now, at least that from what I can see, um, as it's just starting to get more specific, is just taking out a stock or a bond and replacing it with a real estate property. And I mean, right now we're just going kind of over investment strategies overall as a whole. So. I think as, as I go through and I become a senior, those classes will really start to, I'll be able to see a bigger difference within them. Um, but right now I'm just kind of touching the surface of both going over the basics such as terms and all the boring stuff and not really yet letting me know exactly what I'm going to be going into, but, um, yeah, I love that you um, said the boring stuff. I really love that you said the boring stuff because really theory is boring and, and it's okay to say that and I think it's okay to acknowledge it. The reason why you're looking for an internship is you want to get your hands immersed in something that you can actually have tangible, right? I mean, you want to, you want to be able to go into an office, understand how real estate is really bought and sold. You want to go into an office and understand how investments are really traded. And so I think that that's cool that you said that and that you acknowledged and I appreciate your authenticity there because really the theory of college is really just the idea. But what we're trying to do here as a junior and a senior, you're trying to get actual practical knowledge and experience so that you can go out and be gainfully employed and make an impact in the world, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I, I, the more, exactly. It's just, it's kind of finding the difference between the classroom and the actual career and I think that a lot of a lot of what college is is it's teaching you the basics and you need to know the theory sometimes but it's also teaching you a lot about just how to kind of manage your workload whereas once you get to the actual job um, mentors will hopefully show you uh, the ins and outs of the industry and stuff like that and actually give you the hands-on experience that you need to succeed. That's a great point. Mentors are such a huge development piece and, and therefore the reason why you want an internship. So let's, let's get into the question. The, the real reason that you called, you had told me that you kind of had a, a good problem, if you will. Um, and, and for our audience, let's deconstruct that. Let's talk about your experience over the last month of trying to find an internship and, and, and where you currently are in that, in that current search. 
So I am I I was a little bit in a rush to get something locked down for next summer because as you know I'm going to study abroad in Europe next semester, which means that I couldn't even imagine trying to lock down an internship for the summer overseas. So my my primary goal coming into the semester was get internships locked down as soon as possible, and then I can decide between them later on once I get something locked down, if I can get more than one locked down. And so I just started going to the career fairs that CSU hosts. Um, I did skip class one day to go to the career fair down in Denver that uh, the Sports Authority Stadium um, has. And I ended up running into a lot of the same people, um, but almost all those people and companies that were there were financial companies. And it kind of started, I, I started to realize that with the real estate companies, they don't really go to the career fairs, it seems like. It seems more like um, they want you to go to them, which makes sense because I know that in the real world, um, if I went the real estate route, I would have to go to my clients and find them. The clients aren't going to really find you. So I, I ended up being fortunate enough to lock down a internship with more of a banking figure in the financial world. And then my second goal was to lock down one with the real estate and that way I can choose later. So you've got an embarrassment of riches now. It sounds like you've gotten offers from both a financial services company and a commercial real estate company. And we won't name names because that doesn't really matter anyways. This is Jack's journey, but we want you to kind of see this through the eyes of Jack. What do you do? Uh, and that was the question that you had, had brought up to me. You said, look, I just... I remember this last week when you called, you said, I don't want to make the wrong decision. And I, I think for me, what I was reflecting on as you were asking me that question, you know, how do you, how do you give guidance to someone who really wants to set their career in motion in the right place? And so we talked about a few things. We spoke about the type of people you'd be working with. Do they have the heart of a teacher? Are they the person that's going to be mentoring you? Are they going to invest in your future? Um, and then, Likewise, for you, you're going to have to put in the work. They're, going to, they're only going to give you access to their information and knowledge if you put in the work. And so it's a two-way street. But I said you're going to be able to find out if this is a long-term gig or not just based on the way that they talk about you working within their organization. Um, so it's not a problem if you're not hired on after the internship. I wasn't hired on to my internship uh, as a full-time position after college. And that was good for a couple of reasons. One, we weren't staying in Laramie, Wyoming. And two, I wasn't going to be in banking and financial services, which is ironic because that was what my minor was. And it was perfectly tailored to what I could do. But when I, was, when I had that experience of working at the bank, I worked all the way from the teller line to beginning, all the way to the loan department at the end. And I basically, as my mentor said, I was following the dollar through the bank from when someone deposits it to when they send it out as a loan. And uh, I wanted to learn more about that. And so for you, your biggest thing was, hey, I don't want to make the wrong decision. And I said, you're not going to make the wrong decision. Whether you take a, an internship that ends up being your goal for your career and it, it blossoms into a full-time gig or not, it's the experience that you're looking for. So you're looking for something on your resume, item number one. Item number two, besides that resume experience piece of thing, you're looking for an opportunity to basically beta test whether you're going to be in that industry or not. So this is, this is the opportunity to decide whether that industry is good for you. So you got, you got these two offers, and uh, one of the things we talked about is just the different industries, financial services versus commercial real estate. So what was your decision after we, after we spoke? Um, so I did ultimately decide to go with the commercial real estate industry. Um, I know that I mean, reading all these articles online and stuff like that, everyone always says, even my teachers included, because I also sought them for advice, they all told me that commercial real estate is going to be the riskier route. Um, you're going to start out um, without fixed income, and you're going to be going through it, and it doesn't have, and you're, you're going to be working more of a team-based culture, which is true, instead of more for a big firm where they have all the capabilities of supplying you with like health benefits and things like that, and it's just in the end, the, the less risky, more secure route. Um, but I did end up going with the commercial real estate because I thought, especially, it's funny you just talked about the tangibility because I really loved that. I like investments and I like the idea of, of having money make you more money and just kind of overall wealth growth. But the difference between finance and real estate is that real estate is with properties and you can 
go there and physically feel the property. You can walk through it and feel the character and you can really feel the overall vibe of the property. And I kind of really, I appreciate that a lot more in an investment than something that's just on a screen or on paper in the air. Um, so that helped me make my decision into commercial real estate a lot along with, um, it also seems like I just have more of, I have less of a ceiling over my head with commercial real estate. Although it seems more risky, it seems like it could also pay off a lot more in the end, you know, like high risk, high yield. And um, that was also very intriguing to me. And after my conversation with you, where you really said that it kind of hit home with like the idea that you want to be able to go to work loving what you do every day. And in the end, you should go with what your gut is telling you to go with. And um, also that mixed with the whole idea of an internship isn't securing anything yet. It's just kind of dipping your toes in the water. Um, I figured why not go with what my gut says and where it's a little more risky, but possibly higher yield in the end. So why not do that for my internship and see what I can get out of it? Absolutely. And I, you, you captured that exactly how we talked about it last week. And the thing that I'd like to um, emphasize is that risk and reward in investments are directly related. Whether you're talking about your career, whether you're talking about your 401k, the more risk, the more reward. Now, we don't want to be foolish with risk. We want to help mitigate risk whenever we can. But when, when I'm betting on myself or when you're betting on yourself, Jack, especially as a 20-year-old, I'd say jump into that risk. You're, you're at a position in your life and it may seem like you want to do everything perfectly and not have any mistakes along the way, but I will promise you that you have a better opportunity now to recover from mis mistakes than you will when you're 30 or when you're 40 or 50 or 60. And so you should embrace risk right now. And that's why I said, if commercial real estate interests you, your family has experience with it, your dad's been very successful investing in apartment buildings, and I've gotten to know him over time, so I know that's true, then you need to go explore that. If you decide this isn't something that's gonna be the right fit for you, great. You're doing this at a fairly measured risk, even though it is risky, and you can decide whether it's something you wanna do after you graduate. This is all about experimenting. And the company that I own is called Calibrate. Calibrate means to iterate. It means to um, go towards a desired future that's going to end up being better than what you have right now. And so when, when a scientist calibrates an instrument that they're working on, what they're doing is they're saying, hey, this didn't completely work out the way that I wanted it to. And I'm not going to wear that failure like it's personal. I'm just going to say, let's make an adjustment. And we're going to keep adjusting it until we get to our desired result. And so for you, the internship's all about that. So I love that you're embracing the risk. I love that you're not foolishly jumping into it. You're getting wise counsel from family members, from other people you've interviewed with myself, you've interviewed with this other group. And so I think that, I think it's really smart to take a risk on yourself. And I, I, I think that what happens for a lot of people is the idea of the safe corporate job is, is a myth. It's bunk. Um, and I would, I would just challenge anybody that feels like going and working somewhere corporate is the safe uh, the safe bet because especially as a young person they owe no loyalty to you and there's corporations especially publicly traded ones are going to do layoffs and and they'll have decisions that they make that have nothing to do with your performance and you could hitch your wagon to that industry that particular company in that industry and all of a sudden 10 years after hard work they fire you for no better reason besides hey fourth quarter profits weren't what we expected and we got to let you go so I think anything that you can do to control your own destiny, therefore being an entrepreneur, which would be in real estate brokerage or any industry like that, especially at a young age, you've got to try it. Uh, Mark Cuban has a phenomenal video on Bloomberg um, where he talks about he talks about entrepreneurs and he talks about college folks and he says, Hey, look, the more that you can live like a college student, once you've graduated, the better, because what you're going to do is you're going to be able to take risks that someone who's married like myself with three kids and a house. I mean, I can't take the same amount of risk that you do today as, as I did when I was in, in my twenties. And so um, live like a college student well after you've graduated. And so I think that's really cool. Um, I think it's a, first of all, I'm honored that you asked me the question in the first, uh, in the first place. And so now that you've secured this, uh, this internship, what other questions do you have for someone like myself who's been in the industry for 13 plus years? What are some things that you're thinking about as you're mentally preparing for this internship in commercial real estate? Um, 
I think my biggest question and the one that kind of just rides my mind the most is um, the question of what should I expect coming out of college if best case scenario, uh, my internship goes really well and uh, I end up clicking really well with the group um, and I get a job offer out of college. What, what do you think my overall living living um day-to-day -day operations are going to be such as like hours being worked putting into it i know that's more of a job where you put in what you get out which i love um but kind of just an overall i'm having i'm having hard a hard time picturing the road ahead after graduation yeah it's it's a great question and so let's talk about what the summer internship is going to look like and then also let's talk about what after life after college what's next um because i think those are both good questions and i think they really work together so what i would say during the summer internship work your tail off whatever the office hours are come in half an hour 45 minutes prior make sure that you are on time that you're dressed well and that doesn't mean the swankiest suit it just means that you're looking proper that you're very clean pressed uh, and that you have a proud disposition of yourself and the way that you present yourself so arrive early look nice and smile and say yes sir yes ma'am i'll do anything that you need for it. because all that you're doing here is you want to soak up as much experience as you can so if your buddies are going out later in the afternoon uh, to you know, go to the lake or do whatever they're, they're gonna do. Say, hey guys, you know what? I'm here to do this college internship. I'm gonna be getting as much experience as I can and that will enable you to get hired if they have a position. Now some companies have a position afterwards, some don't. Don't take that into any offense if they don't hire you because sometimes th there are people that just have a budget for an internship. So what I would say is while you're there, work as much as you can, try to make as many connections as you can, collect as many business cards, be on LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is something that uh, from a social media network that you may not utilize as much in college, but I would definitely say, make sure to, to, to boost that um, amount of effort on LinkedIn. And then when you get hired, look at it the exact same way. This internship is merely just an audition for how you should work in your first couple of years. Um, I'm not asking you to be a slave to your job or to be, um, uh, to be someone that doesn't have a social life, but I would say that the harder you work in the beginning, the easier your life is going forward. And so I, I worked a lot of 12 to 13 hour days when I first started working. And that was the first couple of years of my career. Um, I was working as an administrator. So I had a salary in the first couple of years, but then I transitioned into brokerage. And so after my first couple of years of working my tail off, then I was self-employed working within the same company. And so I was working my tail off again. And so I'd say, just be prepared for the first five years of your career to really work hard um, and to be honest and to smile and take, uh, take advice from others. So those, those would be the things I could say as far as setting up your day. The idea of a nine to five job doesn't exist. Uh, if it does exist for you, then what's going to happen is you're going to just have a mediocre career. Uh, and I don't think you want that. You're someone that's, that's got uh, some aspirations. And I think for you, if you put in the work now, it will yield results. I don't know when, but it will absolutely yield results. Thank you very much. I, I definitely appreciate that. And I, um, I definitely, I've heard that from almost everybody that I see and talk to that ends up being very successful or is already successful. Um, they usually always had something to say about work more than the average person because it, it work and return is directly correlated. And if you're going to work at average hours, then you're probably going to end up with the average income and average Absolutely. success. Yeah. If you put in the average amount of effort, you're going to get the average. And if you want to succeed, you're going to have to rise above what everybody sees as the minimum level of acceptability. So I think for you, you've got, you've got the right perspective. You've got people in your corner. And so that would be the other thing I would talk to you about is just as far as setting yourself up for success. One of the main questions we ask of all of our interviewees is this idea of dear younger me. Most of the people I interview are in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. And I asked them this question of, hey, if you were 22, what was the advice you wish you knew when you were 22? And if you could write a letter to your 22-year-old self, what would you say? So I'm going to give you that advice because it ends up being the same advice over and over again. And there's three core tenets to the advice that I get from the people I, I interview on these podcasts. Item number one, your income. Uh, what I mean by your income is 
you both have an ability to earn income, but the amount of money you spend directly affects your income. So, hey, if you're making six figures, which is kind of like the dream out of college, like, oh, I'd love to make six figures, right? Well, if you're spending more than you make, it doesn't matter, right? So I've met plenty of people who are on a teacher's salary that have fully funded retirement. They've got paid off cars. It's, it's all because they set up their life the right way. So not only the way you earn income and, and the way that you work hard to earn your income, but how you spend it. It's your income and your outgo. So be conscious of the expenses. Stay away from consumer debt. Stay away from um, credit cards to the extent that you can. So item number one is how you handle your income. Item number two is the influencers in your life. Now, this is something that everybody kind of looks at me and says, hmm, that's, that's very interesting that you talk about influencers because um, you know, one of the things that a lot of people hear about is being under the influence, right? And that's something you can get arrested for if you're driving under the influence. But what I'm talking about here is the people you surround yourself with. Now, these are people that could either be formal mentors, they could be your, your boss, your superior that you're working with. They could also be peer mentors. They can be um, the, the wise industry leader that maybe you've never even met before, but it's someone that you aspire to be like because you can see them from afar. Um, and it could be a thought leader. It could be someone that, uh, that hosts a podcast or that's an author or just someone that's been very successful in their career. So the people that influence you, I think, are, are, are potentially one of the most important things. Um, if you feed your mind with uh, junk television, if you feed your mind with reality TV, you're, you're only going to be thinking about that. If you choose to educate yourself by, by reading uh, good nonfiction business books, uh, if you would listen to podcasts, if you listen to books on Audible or books on, on CD, all of those things are positive influences for you. And then the final thing, so we, we said income was number one, influencers is number two, and number three is the secret sauce, it's initiative. And, and for you, I see that it's beaming through you. It's, it's, I could tell it when we spoke on the phone and then on this video uh, and, and audio, I can just see it. I can see it and hear it. Your initiative is something that can't be taught. Um, it's something that as I was in a, a parent-teacher conference for my, uh, for my daughter that's in second grade, the, the teacher was talking about um, the initiative that their, that their students have and that you can't create motivation Someone is either intrinsically motivated or they're not. And that's, that's something that comes through education. Um, so she was saying, look, someone's either motivated or they're not. And, and you've got to, um, you, you, can, you can sort of amplify that motivation with a good mentor. But, but that initiative is something that you're going to have to really buckle down and say, what do I want of my life? And I'm going to work really hard for the next 10 years to get to the place that I want to be. Am I willing to put in the work now to have the job, the life, the career that I want later? And so it's investing now for the future. So those are the three things, how you handle your income, how you um, surround yourself with good influences, and then your initiative. And so I hope that that helps. Um, and, and I just, I want to say thank you for for having the courage to ask someone that's uh, just slightly older. Um, you know, I, I look at this like you don't have to be asking someone who's in their 50s or 60s. It's great if you can, but someone that's five or 10 years or maybe in my case, 15 years older than you has walked the path that you're looking to walk. And I think that, I think it was really smart of you just to say, look, this has nothing to do with you particular, particularly Kyle, but I'd like to ask you for some advice. And I think that takes guts. I think that, that takes uh, courage and, and I commend you for that, Jack. I think that that's really smart of you. Thank you even more for the uh, advice, Justin, here and over the phone. I mean, I think in a lot of cases, it is more beneficial to ask kind of someone who is in between my stage right now and the more 50 or 60 year old stage because um, I mean, times change, um, the world changes and having someone just a little more current, a little more recent, um, I think their opinions and advice should be weighted a little more heavily. So thank well, you let's, so much. Let's, let's put it this way too. It's sort of like asking your older brother or your cousin that doesn't feel like you're asking your parents, right? You know, and I, let's, let's just put it right there. I mean, it's easier to ask someone that you feel like, hey, they're just a few steps ahead of me. They're not 30 years ahead of me and, and they're also not my folks. So I appreciate you asking me. I wish you the best of luck. You know, this is, this is the Thanksgiving season and I, I just, I encourage everybody that's consuming this podcast, whether it's on YouTube, 
or whether it's on uh, iTunes, I just, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for, for tuning in. Secondly, I want you to think about this as you think about gratitude. If you're in the United States or the UK or Canada or somewhere where you can be consuming this on iTunes via smartphone, you are part of the richest people in the world. There are so many people who have daily struggles just to get water, just to get food. And I would just encourage you this holiday season to, to, to give something of use to the, to the world, whether it be through some sort of donation what, and that could be time or your, um, or your money. And I just, I really appreciate everybody that, that comes to consume this podcast. I think you're all a smart group of people and the people that have been reaching out to me with questions uh, through the podcast. I, I just really appreciate your feedback. So in the Thanksgiving and Christmas season, I just want you to be thinking of what you're grateful for. And Jack, I think that you're really smart to try to set yourself up for a bright future. So Jack Sherman, I appreciate your time and your effort. Um, this podcast is, de is designed to encourage, empower, and educate both leaders, but also future leaders, which you are, Jack Sherman. So I appreciate your time. Thanks for your question. And as I love to say, we will see you around the neighborhood. Thank you. <laughs>